Hello, it's Seb, here to apologize for the two-month gap between my last two videos. Uh, so what happened? A few things. I was uh, traveling, is one. I went back to Heidelberg again, which was very nice. I saw Berlin for the first time, also very lovely. So usually around this time of year, I do like a Greek myth retelling months, uh, where I read like a whole bunch of Greek myth retellings, but kind of this year, instead of a whole bunch, it became mainly focused on Ulysses uh, by James Joyce. Um, his sort of like sort of semi-retelling of, of the Odysseus myth only set in uh, the Dublin, like in one day in Dublin, and it's just like people walking around Dublin, um, and modernist book thing that that is. So I'm reading that, but that because I was a library book, I had to return every single copy that I had of it. I had a bunch of copies, but I had to return all of them before I really got started. Um, I read the first chapter, but then they all had to go back. And so I started reading this as a sort of supplement uh, the first, well, this is two books actually. Oops, there goes my bookmark. I need that. Uh, hang on a second. So this book is called The Poems of Exile uh, by Ovid, the Roman poet, translated by Peter Green. Um, it's actually two books in one. It's the Tristia, written by Ovid, and then what was written afterwards, the Black Sea Letters. So these are autobiographical poems that uh, Ovid wrote after he was exiled to the Black Sea. Uh, away from Rome and he's basically very sad and keeps writing these poems basically writing back to Rome back to his homeland uh, which is really interesting when you think about it uh, in comparison with Ulysses because that's also Joyce sort of exiled from Ireland sort of self-imposed exile and in a way also writing back to Ireland and about Dublin um, but yeah I hadn't actually thought about that until now so now I'm you know I'm gonna think about that a bit more but um, why is this Greek myth related because Ovid is obsessed with Greek myths he is a living encyclopedia of Greek myths and he always uses Greek myths to uh, describe his situations and to basically complain about why his life is so terrible like he says Odysseus didn't have it as bad as I did <laughs> because Odysseus only had to go between Troy and Ithaca and then he shows you on the map that actually the distance that he was exiled was much further and his voyage which was much worse and uh, the god that was chasing Odysseus was Poseidon whereas for him it's uh, the emperor Augustus and like he basically says Augustus is the Zeus of, of Romans and so he's much worse than Poseidon and anyway there's lots of Greek myth references all the way through um, and some of it's really exciting because like I've never read some of the Greek myth references like in a, in a classical source like uh, this, the one about Medea and how she like dismembers her brother is a favorite of mine and I've never actually read it in sort of like a proper poetic ancient source so and that appears in one of the one of the letters that he's writing back so yeah it's really great autobiography and so far and there's five books I'm reading the Tristia I should have said and in the Tristia there's five books and I've read the first four so I'm going to probably finish that before the end of the month and then hopefully also by that time Ulysses will come back to me um but I'm not going to finish Ulysses because it's so, from based on the first chapter, it's so meaty and heavy and interesting and I, it's so full of references that like some are definitely washing over my head, going over my head, washing over me, I don't know, washing out my brain. Some are definitely going over my head. Like when I start, like it's a kind of famous book for being difficult to read, but I, I don't know why I was, I was a bit like naive. I thought, yeah, it'll be all right. How bad could it be? And like at the beginning it was like really great and I was really into it. And then it got to a point where I was reading a whole paragraph and just feeling, I didn't understand anything anything from that paragraph so then I'd read it again and you know um, yeah I want to take it a bit slower and the reason why I'm gonna kind of take it very slow rather than just a bit slow is because I'm moving a uh, country I'm moving to a different country in August which is very exciting but which also means that I have to start thinking about my my reading habits because I'm not gonna take all these books I'm only gonna take a few of these books so I have to decide what's gonna be taken with me what's gonna stay here uh, and you know I, I don't own Ulysses so obviously I'm not gonna take that with me um, and, and in the meantime, before I go, before I leave in August, I want to read the books that I really wanted to read, but are kind of too heavy or too awkward to bring, whether it's because they're library or because they sort of belong in this house. So I kind of want to prioritize and reorganize and create a sort of reading schedule between now and when I move in August. So uh, yeah, like I'm still going to finish uh, Tristia for sure. And my next video, I guess I'll do a Greek myth related video. I don't know what yet. I'll think of, I'll think of something. I'll, I'll come up with something. Um, but uh, yeah, in the meantime, I'm also reading The Silent Cry by Kenta Baroi. Um, which I'm, where am I? I'm 120 pages in and it feels like it just kind of got started. So I don't know, I kind of, it's, it's a relief in a way to really be getting into the story, but also it's like, why did it take you 120 pages to get there? 
Um, I'm also kind of flitting in and out of things like Babel by R.F. Huang, like these classic Japanese short stories. Uh, of the Tarodis as well, just because, you know, like, can't get enough of that good Greek mythology. And some fairy tales. Um, this is called Tangleweed and Brine by Deirdre Sullivan. And, uh, and some other short story books and stuff like that. Like, I've been really, my mood has just been, like, kind of flitting around books and sometimes picking something up and putting something down um, lately. Except for the big projects of Ulysses and Tristia which hopefully uh, Tristia will be finished soon and then Ulysses will be finished, I don't know, like sometime this year? Is that too too ambitious? Because uh, after you move, you know, it's going to be so so hectic, I guess. But anyway, moving is very exciting and like deciding what books I'm going to read before then and bring and, and maybe buy when I get there because I can't bring them. Uh, it's also exciting to do. Yeah, I really had to change sort of my reading plans because uh, one of the big books that I was super excited for was uh, Mild Vertigo by uh, Mieko Kanai, which is coming out on the 21st of June. And I've never been so excited to get a book like the moment it comes out um, in my whole life, I think, probably. Um, and, but, and, and the thing is that if I buy it, I'm probably not going to read it instantly. I'm going to be reading something from, from what I have here, in which case it doesn't make sense to buy it and then carry it to another country. I might as well buy it after I've moved. So I'm going to have to put off buying that book, um, until at least August, which is kind of a bit sad, but also it's exciting because it means once I move into my new house, it'll be something to buy instantly and, and put on my shelf and when I start making a new shelf. There's something nice about um, making a new shelf like from scratch or from just like a very small number of books. I hope that's something that I can keep doing in my life uh, forever. <laughs> Although there's sort of like a competing like drive in me. One of them is like I want to make the perfect shelf which has all my like sacred books on it. And then the other one is I want to like every few years burn everything and then like start again and start collecting books from, from, from nothing. Um, like both of those sound really appealing for me. I don't know which is more appealing to you. But yeah, anyway, that's the state of my reading and my life at the moment. I will uh, do that Greek myth video for you guys. And uh, in the meantime, I hope you're all very well and I hope you're reading lovely books. Let me know what you're reading. Let me know what you think about like bookshelves. Like, is it nice to begin from, from zero or do you always want to have like kind of your like your comfort books there to hand or like a bunch of books you don't know there to hand. Um, I don't know, everyone's different about these things, I guess. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye.